Hello everyone. So today let's discuss about 25 most commonly asked interview questions on your switching concept. So let's see what are the questions. So question number one. So two switches are connected. One port is set to access and the other port to dynamic auto. Will trunking negotiation ha happen? So in your dynamic protocol, first of all, we have four modes that are um, di di dynamic desirable, dynamic aut uh, auto, and then uh, we have trunk port and then we have access. So in your dynamic desirable, it means what? It means it is initializing the trunking negotiation. Auto means it passively waits. Access port is statically access and then trunk port, trunking negotiation will happen. But here the question is two switches are connected to each other. That is switch one and switch two. So one port is set to access and the other to dynamic auto. Then in that case, one is access, the other side is auto. So access is access port and auto is passively waiting. So the negotiation will not happen. So if the one side is an access port, which does not allow trunking and the other is dynamic auto, which only forms a trunk if the other end is dynamic desirable or trunk port. Okay. Next question. So in VTP, what is default mode and how does transparent mode differ? So in your VTP, your default mode is server. By default, every switches are in server mode. So if you want to configure to client or transparent, then we are doing it manually by saying VTP mode client or transparent. So by default, the switch is in server mode. Okay. So next question is what? How does transparent mode differ? So whatever you configure on your server, that will synchronize in your client. But whereas it does not synchronize with your transparent mode. How, how it differs means whatever you configure in your transparent mode, whatever VLAN you configure. So that is not going to uh, synchronize with either server nor the client. So it will re remain independent or secret. So whatever. But the thing is your um, um, transparent mode will not synchronize but it will advertise. See here that was that's what they given in transparent mode VLAN changes are not shared with other switches. Instead they do not participate in VTP synchronization but it forwards the advertisements. So that's why it is deferred. And what is shutdown action in port security? So shutdown is a default violation action. So in your switch if to a PC1 is connected. So if you remove that plug, remove the link and if you connect it with PC2 and again if you connect it with PC1, it will go to your shutdown action. That means error disabled state. Once it is removed and if it's uh, connected with PC2, even if the authorized PC that is PC1 will not get access and the logs will be generated. So this is your shutdown mode. So what are the modes we have in VTP? We have three uh, in your um, port security. We have three modes that is shutdown mode, restrict mode and then protect mode. So how does STP prevent layer 2 loops? So STP elects a root bridge and blocks redundant plans, ensuring only single active path exists, thereby preventing loops. So what is loop? So when your frame is keep on circulating um, within the topology due to alternative path, then your loop is created, correct? So STP what it does is, so it will react, create, elect a root bridge. So other alternative paths, it will block it so that the frame is not circulating and the loop is avoided by that. Next question, what is the use of preemption command in your HSRRP? So in HSRRP, we have two routers, R1 and R2. So they are active and standby. So once the active router goes down, then your standby router comes active, correct? So until you change it uh, manually, the R1 is not going to become active. But once you give the command of preemption in your R1, once the R1 goes down, it will go to standby, R2 will become active. and then. Once the R1 comes active, automatically R1 will become the active router. See, that's what they given. When enable preemption allows a router with higher priority to take over as active after recovering from failure. So once the router goes failure and it comes back active, it will become active, replacing the correct active router. So for example, if it, if the link is shut down, okay, so uh, then you're going and you're saying, okay, R1, you are making it no shutdown. Then what will happen? Automatically R1 will become active because of the command preemption so we are giving this preemption command only on the router we want it to be active we are not giving it in the other routers okay so in hsrp which ip is used as the default gateway by end devices so hsrp is a redundancy device so you have two routers so one router 
we are giving the physical IP, the other router also has the physical IP, but we are not giving the physical IP. Instead, we are configuring with a virtual IP and we are giving that virtual IP as the default gateway on the PC1 and PC2, whatever the end devices connected there. See, devices use the virtual IP addresses configured in HSRRP as their default gateway, not the physical IPs. Okay. Next question. What is the name of procedure when inter VLAN routing is configured on layer 3 switch? So that procedure is called switch virtual interface and we say it as SVI. What is Ether channel? So Ether channel is a Cisco technology that bundles multiple physical link into a single logical link. Okay. And thereby it, it gives increased bandwidth and redundancy purpose also. So that's why we are using Ether channel. In simple you can say we are bundling the multiple physical link links into single virtual link. Okay. Next question. What is the difference between access port and trunk port what is access port access port belongs to single vlan and it forward traffics to only one vlan only whereas trunk port is carries multiple vlan and it forwards tra traffic to multiple vlan for example if you have vlan 10 and vlan 20 it will not communicate from vlan 10 to 20 in your access port if it's vlan 10 and vlan 10 then communication is possible if it's a different vlan then it should be in under trunk port Okay, and what is GLBP? So GLBP is Cisco proprietary that provides redundancy and load balancing. So in HSRRP and VRRP, so only one router is active at a time. Whereas in your GLP, two routers can also be active at the same time and there wise it's providing load balancing also. Okay. So what is the default priority in STP? So default priority is 32768. So that is your priority. But whenever you go to a switch and you say show spanning tree, you will be seeing 32769, correct? So why it is 8? Because that one number is added, that is your VLAN number. By default, your switch is under default VLAN, that is VLAN 1. So that's why you're seeing it as 32769. So once the, it is configured as VLAN 10, then you will see it as 32778. So by default, the priority is 32768. Whatever the number it is increased, it is your VLAN number, okay? So how is layer 2 loop created? So when multiple frame of the single MAC address try to communicate between switches due to alternative path, then your layer 2 loop is created. Layer 2 PDU is what frame? So that's why frame is circulating. So layer 2 loop occurs when multiple path exist between switches, causing frames, frames to circulate indefinitely due to repeated forwarding of the same frame. So this, the frame is keep on circulating within the topology because of the alternative path, correct? So what? How does? How do you avoid it through your STP by? Uh, uh, I mean, by blocking the alternative path. Okay. So that is the difference. So what is the VLAN ID range? So range of VLAN is zero to four zero nine five. Okay. What is DTP? Dynamic Trunking Protocol. So DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol that automatically negotiates the trunking protocol between the two switches. See, switch 1 is connected, switch 2 is connected, switch 1 and 2 are directly connected. So one end you are making it as trunk port. So automatically the other end will become a trunking port even though if you are not going to make it manually. So automatically the trunking negotiation will happen. But this happens only to the directed connected. If you are connected with the switch uh, switch 2 to switch 3, if you are connected, so that port will not become a trunk. Only the directly connected, if you are making switch 1 as trunk, the, the same port which is connected to S2, that is your switch 2, will become your trunk port. Okay. And what is access control list? So when you try to filter the network traffic on the router's interface, either inbound or outbound direction, then your access list is used. See here, access list used to filter network traffic based on defined rules. So what are the defined rules we have? We have implicit rule and explicit rules, correct? So what is implicit rule? Those are predefined and it cannot be modified. What is explicit rules? It can be modified, that is user defined. So we are going to create some explicit rules, okay? Applied in the inbound or outbound direction of the interface. That is on the router interface, we are applying the um, ACL rules. So first we are creating it and then applying, uh, applying it on the router's interface. That, that is your access list. So what are the things you can uh, filter? You can filter a host, subnet, network, a protocol, port number, a specific service. So these many things you can filter it in your under your access control list. Next question. What is the difference between a hub and a switch? 
सो हब वर्क ऑन योर फिजिकल लेयर एंड स्विच वर्क ऑन योर लेयर टू सो हब इस हब वी से इज डम डिवाइस एंड स्विच वी आर सेंग इट एज इंटेलिजेंट डिवाइस वाई इज दैट बिकॉज हब डजेंट लर्न एनी थिंग वेर एज योर स्विच लर्न मैक एड्रेस सो दैट द हब द एनी डिवाइसेज विच आर कनेक्टेड टू हब राइट सो इफ अ पैकेट कम्स इन द हब विल नो मैटर वॉट इट विल फॉरवर्ड टू एवरी अदर स्विच ऑल्सो एवरी अदर डिवाइसेज ऑल्सो विच इज कनेक्टेड टू द हब वेर एज स्विच initially if a packet is coming it will broadcast for example a r packet is coming it will broadcast but the next time it will know the mac address it will read the mac address so that it will perform unicast whereas hub doesn't do that and hub has single collision domain so what happens even though there has the information it will send it to all other devices which are directly connected but uh, switch has purport collision domain so whatever you want to send to a intended person that intended person will get the packet okay and hub is a half duplex that means two way communication is possible but at a time it is not possible if pc1 and 2 both are communicate in trying to communicate to pc3 and pc4 at that time collision will happen whereas that doesn't happen in your switch because it is full duplex two way communication and both the end can speak at the spec say, same time so what is a sub interface so sub interface is a logical interfaces on your router interface so sub interface used to route between vlans so in in your inter vlan routing we are using this sub interface that means we are breaking the physical interface into a logical interface and there we are assigning the ips and we are doing the inter vlan routing for that purpose we are using this sub interfaces what is inter vlan routing now so it allows communication between different vlans by routing traffic between them okay so if you are connected in a lan and you are divided as two vlans so vlan 10 and vlan 20 you have under same subnet will they communicate no what they require they require a inter vlan routing though they are in the same network they have to they are in the different vlans to to communicate between two different vlans we are using this inter vlan routing okay and it can be either done by a router or your l3 switch so if you route if you do it with your router that is called as router on a stick if you do it with your l3 switch that is called your switch virtual interface which we saw earlier okay next question will go so what inf- information does a dhcp server provide so your dhcp server provides four informations what are the four informations ip address subnet mask default gateway and your dns server address okay four things your dhcp provides and your question number 20 how does dhcp works so dhcp works on on your dora process that is called discover offer request and acknowledgement so in your discover uh, uh, packet the pc is trying to find the dhcp server in your offer packet that is in your discover packet it is using the broadcast method to find the dhcp offer and then again the dhcp is offering the ip address and whatever parameters it you needed for the pc then your pc will pro, uh, perform a gr what is gr to find the duplication address whether the ip is used in the network already or not and then it will request okay these are the ips it is fine i will take it and then in your acknowledgement packet you will be receiving your ip addresses subnet mask default gateway and dns server okay so this is how your dhcp works so what is the purpose of dhcp relay agent so it forwards dhcp request from clients to a dhcp server located in another network so if it's in the same network the pc will send the broad- broadcast correct and you will be able to know okay because it is directly uh, within the same net- network but what if it is in the other network it will perform the broadcast but then your router will not forward the broadcast packet because it, what because it has purport broadcast domain correct so it will not forward in that case your dhcp relay agent comes into picture so your that resolves the problem so that will send the request to the dhcp server which is in the different network okay next question explain stp timers so in your stp we have three timers that is hello second so every 2 seconds the packet is uh, the bpdu messages are exchanged so what is maximum age that is 20 seconds in your maximum age what is maximum age means so how long a switch switch is in um, um, without receiving bpdu message how long your switch is up that is called your maximum age timer what is forward delay how much time your switch stays on your listening and learning time that is your forward delay timer okay so what is a vlan vlan is a logical segmentation of your broad- broadcast domain okay devices in the same li- vlan can communicate directly even if they are physically separated so see in your vlan 
For example, what is a VLAN? It's a virtual local area network. So initially you are having a LAN network. So there are 10 PCs connected. So what you're doing is you're re removing the first five, five uh, PCs, not removing, you're changing it to a VLAN 10. Another five PCs you're ta uh, making it to VLAN 20. That means what? A LAN you're making into a multiple virtual VLAN. Okay. And do you think they can communicate with each other? No, they cannot communicate as long as they are in the same VLAN. If they are in different VLAN, then your inter VLAN routing comes into picture. So what is it happening? We are making a physical LAN into a multiple virtual VLANs. Okay. Logical segmentation of your broadcast domain. That is your VLAN. So what is flooding in your switching? So flooding occurs when a switch does not know the destination MAC address and sends the frame out to all the ports except the one it came from. So if PC1 is trying to ping PC10 which are all connected through a switch. So initially the PC1 will not have the MAC address of the PC10. So what it will do? It will try to get the MAC address of PC10 by performing ARP. So it will send the ARP request to a switch. What does a switch do? It does the broadcasting. That means it will send the broadcast message to till PC2 to PC10. That means, but it will not send back to the PC1 because the request came from there. It is broadcasting that is called flooding. It will send to all the connected devices to resolve the MAC address. Okay. And 25th question, what are the modes of ether channel? So under your ether channel, we have three modes. That is port aggregation protocol. We say it, have, say it as PAGP. And then we have LACP that is link aggregation protocol and then we have static mode that is called on mode. So we have dynamic desirable auto, active passive and on mode. So these are the three modes in your ether channel. Why ether channel is required again? For the load balancing. Okay. So we are making the multiple link into a single logical link that is your ether channel and these are the three modes. Okay. So, so we have seen 25 most commonly asked questions. So thank you very much.